we're excited to see, but I'm sure um, that that's hurting a little bit right now, right? Touch of the water after a year and a half off. Oh yeah, it's bad. I, when I first got in the water, I was as slow and as unfit as I thought I was going to be. Um, but I'm enjoying it more than I thought I would. I thought that I would hate this beginning bit. I thought I would hate that grind. But I'm actually really enjoying it and being a part of the swimming community again. Uh, getting to come down here and watch some of these incredible events and watch all the Aussies do so well. They just be absolutely killing it. It kind of makes it a little bit better and it makes me a little bit more motivated as well. So I mean, you're someone who has been incredible in the sport. How important was that time for you to take that? Tokyo, you know, you say you've been a professional athlete since you were 16. That's a lot of work on not just the body but also the mind. Yeah, I decided to take a time off because I knew I, I didn't think I was quite done with the sport, but I just couldn't go back to training. My body was completely broken and mentally I was really, really tired. And so I just needed uh, a big break. And I kind of said to myself, if it is time to say goodbye, I'll know by the time I come back. Australia, but by the time I came back to Australia, I was like, no, I think I'm ready to go around again. And it was just, it was fun. And I would say I was really nervous about taking time out. I've never really taken a big break before. Uh, but I would say that if people are feeling stuck, if they're feeling like uh, they need a change uh, or to shake up something in their life, or even if they need to pull back, like I've always been someone who's so goal driven and motivated and wanting to achieve. We're going to be back in just a moment to look through tonight's racing as well, but first of all, here's a word from our sponsors. It's been wonderful having a catch up, but of course it's time to get back to the business. All right, tonight it's going to be an amazing night of racing. We've got nine finals. That's nine more world champions by the end of tonight. Um, obviously, we're starting with that 100 free. We've got to talk about your current world record holder you are. Um, you must be excited to watch it. Yeah, forget saving the best to last. The best is right up the front, guys. You don't want to miss this. It's the 100 meter freestyle. Um, it's my favorite event.
good bang. And, you know, he was looking really strong at half and half and half. The World Cup was here. He was just dominating that event. I think it was like six in a row. Uh, I know it's going to be a home crowd. It's really good. I want to do it as well. I think the breaststroke events are going to be great as well. That men's uh, 100 meter breaststroke. I was looking at the start list. And it could be, you know, any of them really. Yeah, it really could. Can Adam Peaty come back and win a world title, a short course world title? He's going to be really challenged by Niccolo from Italy. And I really think that he's going to have to bring his absolute A game, which is what we want, right? We want these superstars to have to bring their absolute A game. We want it as a tight battle. And I think it's going to be really interesting. And of course, we're finished the night with another couple of relays. The relays have been, I mean, they always are fun. so much fun to watch. But they have been iconic here. We've seen world record after world record after world record go. Are we surprised because it's a bit cold, right? I was like, people are swimming really fast. But we're finishing with those uh, 4 by 50 meters. It's going to be fast as going to be here it is. It might be a little bit cold on pool deck, but the atmosphere that is created in those relays, it just lifts you. It's the only time I've ever been able to hear the crowd while well, I've been swimming is during relays. And there's something about it that like stirs something deep inside you. And you can find that little bit extra I'm going to push a little bit more, so I'm so, so excited. And, and, and 50 relays, we don't get this in any other event. It is just going to be whitewashed out there. Like, there are waves going to be going everywhere. I'm, it, it, the last summers have to like, be good surfers, and they're pretty much going to be surfing into the wall. Um, it's going to be choppy, it's going to be fast, it's going to be furious. We are starting the night off with a bang, and we're finishing it with a bang, and we've got so much good meat and stuff in the middle. I love that day. That was a great way to describe tonight. Well, thank you so much for coming down and joining me. It's always a pleasure to see you. I love having you back here with your racing. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please give it up for the incredible Kelly Campbell? Welcome to the pool deck, your referees and their team of technical officials. The referees for today's events, Daphne Berg, Dennis Kana. Your starters for tonight's events, Kazumi Eguchi, David Cooper. The Technical Swimming Committee Commission for today's event, Chairperson, Craig Hunter. <laughs> Vice Chairperson, Peyora Yuan. And Honorary Secretary, Jay Thomas. Technical officials, you may now take your seats.
Melbourne, Australia, a city of five million people lucky enough to live in what's been internationally acclaimed as the most friendly city in the world. A city boasting spectacular sporting facilities, including the monolithic Melbourne Cricket Ground, home to the 56 Olympics and not far away the Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre on the shores of Albert Park Lake. In a few months' time, the Formula One cars will be racing around the lake. But today, this is the setting for the 16th FINA World 25 Metre Championships. Blue skies over Melbourne. We've been waiting for them all week. And we've got a wonderful day in store. We're into the third of six days of competition. The first two nights of finals were sensational. Tonight promises to be more of the same. I'm Mike McCann, Bobby Hurley. Welcome to you. It's been a great day already. The weather has cleared and uh, we have a wonderful night ahead of us. Nine finals ahead of us this evening. Thank you, Mike. The crowd has turned out for a fantastic night of finals, kicking things off with the women's and men's 100 freestyle. I cannot wait to see McKeon and Jorge on the women's and Jordan Crooks. Let's see if he can hold off Chalmers and Popovich in the men's race. Well, these are the medals that have been decided already and it's been a wonderful start for the host nation, leading the gold medal count with five. The United States leading the overall tally with 11 and four gold, Italy two, and then you've got singles to Canada, Brazil and South Africa. New Zealand uh, through Fairweather have taken two silver medals and uh, good to see the spread of medals in the early stages of the competition. Still four days remaining. As I mentioned, we have a wonderful night ahead of us, a really busy night with nine finals and semi-finals in four other events. And what a way to start. The women's 100 metres freestyle and then the men's 100 freestyle. Of course, we'll be stopping along the way for medal ceremonies and uh, we've got some of those other the ceremonies along the way. The um, event will finish tonight with the men's 4x50 metres freestyle relay and, uh, of course, the ceremony for the 400 free. A lot to look forward to and it's not too far away. Let's uh, relive some of the action in the heats this morning, Bobby. Yeah, women's 50 backstroke. Molly O'Callaghan made it through there. The Polish swimmers, they were strong on the men's side as well. We will see Ryan Murphy in the water with his teammate Dakota Luther in the 200 fly. There's Chad LeClos looking to join elite company if he can take out the men's 200 fly again tonight. But he'll have his hands full. A really strong morning of action. We'll see Kieran Smith in the men's 400 free. Swimming out of lane four in the last individual final of the night. And the sprint relay is always exciting. The Netherlands, the fastest on the men's side. United States looking to hold off Australia on the women's. And the officials are being introduced here, overseeing this evening's session. An important role they are playing at the 16th FINA World Championships, the last FINA World Championships before they become known as World Aquatics. That'll be for football over next year. OK, let's um, head out to the warm-up pool. Yeah, we've got the men's breaststroke, 100 breaststroke in there tonight. So Adam Peaty's going to feature in that alongside Niccolo Martinegi. Some of the swimmers just getting warmed up for their race. There's Emma McKeon swimming out of lane four in the first final tonight. Can she threaten the world record? Stands at 50.25. We'll have to see if she can challenge that. The Australians have had a fantastic competition so far here in Melbourne. They lead the medal tally coming into the third night of competition. The United States no doubt would have discussed what events are the key ones to try and claw back the, the lead, the gold medal lead that the Australians have of one. And that key event tonight is going to be the women's 4 by 53 relay. If the Australian women win that, that'll be a, 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 a big way in topping the gold medal tally here at these World Championships. The stands are packed. It's a sellout tonight. And we're looking forward to the first of the events. It's the women's 100 metres freestyle final. Kate Campbell, the world record holder, 50.25. Ladies and gentlemen, our first event of the evening is the women's 100 metre freestyle final. Swimming in lane eight, representing Canada, Taylor Ruck. Taylor Ruck, back in world championship finals. Four Olympic medals in her career so far. 
in lane one, representing United States of America, Natalie Hines. Natalie Hines is 29 years of age, but this is her first World Short Course Championship since she's made it through to the final. In lane seven, representing United States of America, Tori Haas. The 20-year-old Tori Haas, 42 gold medals here in Melbourne, won the 50 butterfly last night. In lane two, representing France, Farrell Gastadello. Gastadello is an experienced swimmer of 27 years of age. She's got the 100 individual medley semi-final later tonight. In lane six, representing Netherlands, Mark Steenbergen. Steenbergen in six. She's swimming well here. Personal best time in the semi-finals last night. In lane three, representing Australia, Madison Wilson. Two Australians in three and four swimming alongside each other. Wilson, a member of the gold medal winning four by 100 metre In lane team. five, representing Hong Kong, China, Siobhan Hohe. Siobhan Hohe, five, defending champion and Olympic silver medalist in this 100 metre freestyle. And in lane four, representing Australia, Emma McKeon. Oh, what a start, Miss McKeon at the Tokyo Olympics. She's won 11 Olympic medals, including five gold. It's going to be quite a race. The field for the women's 100 freestyle, Emma McKeon in lane four. And Siobhan Horhe in lane five. Yeah, this will be a head-to-head -head race between McKeon and Horhe. It's their first final side-by-side -side since the Tokyo Olympics last year. This is the final of the women's 100-meter freestyle. McKeon, the race favorite in the prime of her career. Jorge, will it be a goal to Hong Kong? Away, even start, McKeon in the yellow cap. Above her in the other yellow cap is a teammate, Wilson. And uh, McKeon's away well. Also down there in lane number seven, Tori Husk with her traditional fast start. Yeah, Husk out quick through the 25. It was a much better dive there from Jorge, and she needed it to be. But she's a 200-metre swimmer, so watch for her to move through the back half of this race, the swimmer in five. McKeon turns first, 24-4. She's just point two over the world record pace. This is where she'll try and break the field open. She's breathing to her left. It's McKeon pulling away from Jorge. And she turns for the last time. It's McKeon in front, Jorge second, and Steenbergen in third. A wonderful turn that by McKeon. The crowd is lifting her. She's flying. So too is Jorge. Close finish coming up. McKeon, McKeon gets it. McKeon in a championship record, beating Jorge. Another gold medal to Australia. What a start. McKeon's reign continues. 50.77 championship record time for Emma McKeon, and she delivers another gold medal to the Australian team. Gold medal number six, and it's her first ever World Short Course title. Got off the blocks well. She had that advantage over Jorge through that first 25 metres, but coming into the last turn, it turned into that head-to-head -head battle like we thought. Jorge was flying at the finish. Almost got there at the touch, but McKeon stretches out. There's her boyfriend, Cody Simpson. Very happy here in Melbourne is Simpson. But in the pool, this is the finish. The last few strokes, Jorge was storming home, reaching out, 0.1 of a second. McKeon claims her first individual gold medal of the championships. And the crowd, they enjoyed that swim. She makes it exciting, Emma McKeon. And so too does uh, Siobhan Horhe with a finish like that. A tenth of a second separating them. It's another gold medal to Australia. Gold medal number six, Emma McKeon, and a championship record time.
Silva to Hong Kong through Siobhan Horhey and Steenbergen of Netherlands taking the bronze. What a start. Magnificent performance by McKeon. Ah, uh, Emma, what a way to start the night. A new world record, ladies and gentlemen, a championship record. What a way to do that in front of the home crowd. Yeah, well, I mean, to do it in front of the home crowd is even more special. I've got a lot of my family over here, um, a lot of my close friends and my boyfriend down there. So, yeah, it's just a great opportunity to do it on home soil. And you're someone who seems to thrive in performance. You know, whenever I see you come out to race, you're always so calm, cool, collected. How do you sort of manage that heading into these big events? Um, it's taken a lot of practice. Um, I think I seem, I look more calm than I feel. Um, but I mean, I just embrace the nerves. I think being nervous is a good thing. It means you care about what you're about to do and it means you've worked hard for it. So I love it now. And you know what? We loved watching her do it, didn't we, ladies and gentlemen? Give it up for your new world champion, Emma McKeon. Great start for Australia. Well, the stands are full here, and that is just the start they wanted. Lani Pallister winning the first gold medal of the championships at this time on night one. And here on night three, Emma McKeon striking gold in the 100 metres freestyle. Next up, the men's 100 metres freestyle. We will see the world record holder, Kyle Chalmers, in action. He has a time of 44.84. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the swimmers in the final of the men's 100 meter freestyle. In lane eight, representing Great Britain, Tom Dean. Tom Dean, Olympic champion in the 200 freestyle, finds himself in the shorter 100 meter distance and in lane eight. Swimming in lane one, representing People's Republic of China, Pan Zhang Li. Pan Zhang Li is only 18 years of age, he's got a best time of 46.19 in lane one. Swimming in lane seven, representing Italy, Carmen Cheshon. Check on the backstroke specialist, was on the freestyle relay that broke the world record on night one of competition. Swimming in lane two, representing Romania, David Popovic. The champion from Budapest, the world record holder in the long course, Popovic in lane two. In lane six, representing Italy, Alessandro Moresi. Is the defending champion, all six foot eight of him, Alessandro Moresi. 45-7, he swam last night in the semi-finals. Swimming in lane three, representing Australia, Kyle Schulman. He's the world record holder in the short course. The winner of the gold medal at the Rio Olympics, second in Tokyo, Chalmers in three. In lane five, representing France, Maxime Grousseau. Maxime Grousseau, the Frenchman, had the fastest second 50 meter split in the semi finals last night. Watch for him on that last lap. And in lane four, representing Cayman Islands, Jordan Crooks. This is remarkable. He's still going strong. He was quickest through to the semis and now quickest into the final. The Cayman Islands looking to create history here through Jordan Brooks. They've never won a medal at the FINA World Championships. Brooks in lane four. The start this list is the for the final men's 100 of the men's 100 meter Brooks freestyle. And Brousse in four and five. Chalmers and Popovich, a big showdown in two and three. Moresi, of course, within all of that, the defending champion in six.
Quick start there by Pan in lane number one. Alongside him, Popovich. Chalmers away and in lane four, Brooks is flying. Oh, isn't he good off the start, Jordan Brooks? 10.1 to the 25. He had the quickest opening 50 last night in the semis. But Crusoe and Chalmers, they're the back half swimmers. So it is Brooks in front, shading that world record line. His underworld record pace at the 50. 21.32 and Chalmers is in striking distance. Brooks in front by half a length. Chalmers being buoyed on by the crowd. We'll keep an eye on the world record. We'll keep an eye on what's happening to the Cayman Islands as well. But here comes Chalmers. Chalmers takes over. Kyle Chalmers. King Kyle. King Kyle in a championship record. Takes the gold in the men's 103. What a last 25 by Chalmers. A time of 45-16. He reigns supreme. King Kyle is back on top. Chalmers claims his first ever World Championship crown in front of his home crowd fans. And don't they absolutely love him here in Melbourne? There he is up the blocks. What an athlete. So powerful. Much improved skills in this part of his career for Chalmers. Crooks was out fast, wasn't he? What an impressive sprinter he is. The boy from the Cayman. But coming into the last turn, Chalmers was within striking distance. He could see him breathing towards his right. And there's no one in the world that's quicker at the end of 100 freestyle than Carl Chalmers. Championship record time. Shades his own world record. That's the margin there. Grusso touching second. Crooks fell back way down the field. Oh. What a race. The men's 100 free, taken out by Kyle Chalmers, Crusoe the silver, Maresi the bronze, and Popovich unplaced but sets a world junior record. Incredible. Let's hear from Kyle. Kyle, uh, I know it's your first short course world title as well. To do it like that, what an amazing performance. Yeah, it was a uh, very well executed race. I think the crowd carried me over the line. It's good to have that. <laughs> Noise and energy carrying me through the race and uh, having my family and friends in the crowd's awesome. And I mean, I think we need to talk about that field as well. Very popular, you know, world-class field there. There were some big challenges, uh, you know, but you, you sort of stepped up to the mark coming into that final 25. Could you see where, where Jordan was as you were coming down that, that final 25? No, nah, I swim with my eyes closed. I'd never have any idea really, so. Uh, I knew he was gonna be fast. He's been fast through those rounds, but it's about doing it in the final. And... I pride myself on stepping up each round uh, and delivering when it counts. Well, you certainly delivered uh, today. Congratulations. Championship record, world champion. Ladies and gentlemen, Kyle Chalmers. Gee, what a start. Two races and two victories for the host nation. And that elevates them to seven gold medals. Now they're three gold medals in front of the United States team. And we're only, we're not even three full days through the competition. We're not even at the halfway mark yet. So the United States with some chasing to do. Semi-final time now in the women's 50 metres backstroke with uh, Maggie McNeil. She will be in action. She's the world record holder, 25-27 set last year. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the swimmers for the first semi-final of the women's 50 backstroke. Swimming in lane eight, representing France, Analia Picre. Three from France, swimming out of lane eight. She was the bronze medalist at the Long Course World Championships earlier this year. In lane one, representing France, Mary Ambre Molu. Molu is only 17 years of age, so one of the young, up and coming French swimmers in the first World Championships. In lane seven, representing People's Republic of China, Wang. Le Tien. Another teenager in Juan Lishen, 18 years of age, swimming at her first in lane two, representing Australia, Kaylee McEwen. Huge roar for McEwen, the winner of the 100, with three Olympic gold medals in her cupboard. In lane six, representing Canada, Maggie McNeil. Another Olympic champion here, McNeil. Butterfly Olympic champ, also the world record holder in this event. 
in lane three, representing Sweden, Louis Hansen. 26 years of age now, Hansen. Three-time world short course champion, gold medalist. She was the bronze medalist in Abu Dhabi. In lane five, representing United States of America, Claire Curzan. The exciting 18-year-old Claire Curzan. Bronze in this, in the 100 backstroke last night in that really close fight. And in lane four, representing Canada, Kylie Maas. She's got a great record, Kylie Maas, the Canadian. Six silver and one bronze at World Short Course Championships. Wouldn't she love a gold? She's got to get through the semi-finals, first of all. It's the first semi-final of the women's 50 metres backstroke. Kylie Maas of Canada, Claire Curson of the United States, and Kaylee McEwen, the winner of the 100 in lane number two. Yeah, big names in this field, only the semis. Curzon swimming this race for the first time in the heats this morning. McEwen, the 100 metre champion last night. But watch for McNeil in that red suit of Canada, swimming out of lane six. Semi-final one underway then. Mars and Curzon in the middle lanes and we watch for McEwen in two, McNeil in six and McNeil comes up in front in that red suit. As she goes up to the wall now, there's going to be little between all of them. Curzon just in front of McNeil and third place at the moment, Big Ray in lane number eight as they bring it home. And in lanes five and six, Curzon, McNeil, they're after the world record, they won't get that. But Curzon takes it out from McNeil and third home was Mass. Yeah, quick swim there, Claire Curzon, 25-6-0. She surprises herself. Normally a butterfly and freestyle specialist trying her hand here at the 50 back. Here they were off the start. McNeil absolutely electrifying under the water in that red suit. Got a clear lead off the start and the turn, but Curzon swimming there was super smooth. And they both really pushed that 15-metre mark off the turn down to the finish. Looked like it could have been McNeil but she's one of the shorter swimmers on the international scene. And Curzon surprises and takes semi-final number one. Result of semi-final one looking like this with Curzon from McNeil, four one hundredths of a second separating the USA and Canada. Canada also third through Kylie Maas. McEwen fifth behind Hansen. was worthy of the final that field in semi-final one we've still got some big names to come in semi-final two though let's meet them now ladies and gentlemen please welcome the swimmers in the second semi-final of the women's 50 meter backstroke swimming in lane eight representing united states of america erica brown erica brown in eight already got the full set of medals here in Melbourne, coming in the way of relays, gold, silver, and bronze. Swimming in lane one, representing Italy, Silvia Scalia. Scalia, the 27-year-old Italian with the best time of 26.18 in lane one. In lane seven, representing Netherlands, Micah DeWard. Micah DeWard. 26-year-old looking to add to her nine world short course medals she's won in her career. In lane two, representing Czech Republic, Simona Kubova. The oldest in the field here, 31 years of age. She was the bronze medalist in 2012 in Istanbul, 10 years ago. In lane six, representing Netherlands, Kira Toussaint. Olympic finalist, Kira Toussaint. She's also the former world record holder in this event, the swimmer from the Netherlands. In lane three, representing Sweden, Hannah Rosfall. Rosfall of Sweden, 22 years of age, appearing at her third World Short Course Championships. 
in lane five, representing Australia, Molly O'Callaghan. O'Callaghan, 25.99 this morning, personal best. Two goals, two world records already here. In and Norway. in lane four, representing Denmark, Yuli Kapp Jensen. So Yuli Jensen, 22 years of age, the swimmer from Denmark with the best time, 25.85. She is the quickest of this group, making it through to semi-final two. Field for semi-final two with Jensen and O'Callaghan, Denmark and Australia in the yellow lanes there, four and five, flanked by Rossval and Toussaint. There's Jensen there, personal best this morning. Wireless from Abu Dhabi. She's up against O'Callaghan, one of the busiest swimmers of these World Championships. Silver medalist last night, 100 backstroke O'Callaghan. Curzon's winning time in the first semi, 25.6. Jensen away in lane number four at Callahan and the yellow cap alongside her. We'll watch them come up after 15 and probably first to emerge in lane number five is O'Callaghan. She would lead as they go down to the halfway point. O'Callaghan in front of Jensen and then it's back to DeWard in lane number seven. O'Callaghan's finishing hard going through in lane number five. She looks like she's got this under control and O'Callaghan at it who takes out semi-final two. Rossville finished well for second and Jensen in third. 25-69. Well, Curson with 25.6. O'Callaghan, she is right in the mix here come finals time. Yeah, she's so fast underwater is O'Callaghan. She's the world champion in the 100 freestyle in the long course pool. Only racing the backstroke events individually here in Melbourne. She almost stole that 100 last night and Gee, she looked impressive there in semi-final number two. 25-69, so that is a terrific time. A big personal best for O'Callaghan. Rossville second and Jensen third in semi-final two. It's going to be really exciting tomorrow. These are the swimmers into the final. Carson McNeil, O'Callaghan and Maas. So there, Hanson, Rossville, Jensen, the ward. It took a time of 26.02 to make it through 26.09. McEwen missing out as the first reserve. Toussaint, the second reserve at 26.17. So we've had the women's 50 back. Now it's the turn of the men. The men's 50 metres backstroke. Florent Manadou setting that world record eight years ago, 22.22. Yeah, recently got broken. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the swimmers in the first semi-final of the men's 50-meter backstroke. Swimming in lane eight, representing Japan, Irie Yosuke. 32-year-old Irie from Japan. We've seen him for the better part of a decade now, swimming out of lane eight. Swimming in lane one, representing Germany, Marit Ulrich. Ulrich. 25-year-old German made the semi-finals of the 100 at the Tokyo Olympics. He's a big man at 6'6". Swimming in lane 7, representing Japan, Kawamoto Takeshi. The second of the Japanese swimmers, Kawamoto, butterfly finalist from back in 2018. Swimming in lane 2, representing United States of America, Ryan Murphy. Well, he won the 100. In fact, he's also gold medalist in the relay here, so he's having a fine meet, the 27-year-old. Swimming in lane six, representing Greece, Apostolos Christou. Christou in six, 23.18. He's been as quick as 22.87. Miles from Swimming the in best lane three, year. representing Canada, 
Javier Acevedo. Acevedo, the 24-year-old Canadian with a best time of 23.10 in lane three. Swimming in lane five, representing Trinidad and Tobago, Dylan Carter. Carter, undefeated on the World Cup Tour this year. Looking for his third ever World Shot Course medal. And in lane four, representing Australia, Isaac Allen Cooper. Well, what a performance by the 18-year-old Cooper last night. A bronze medal in the 100. So he is coming into his own. And here he is at the World Championships semi-final in his home country. Semi-final, one of the men's 50 back, Cooper and Carter. Australia, Trinidad and Tobago, four and five. Carter in sensational form on the FINA World Cup circuit. Cooper taking his time to get undressed here, making his competitors wait. Carter, he was good last night in that 50 fly final. Murphy. Championship record in the 100 back last night. Watch for him to fly out of lane two. Here's Murphy in lane two. He's won six golds at the World Short Course Championships. Acevedo, his North American neighbour from Canada. Cooper and Carter away in lanes four and five there. At the top of the screen, it's Ulrich who got a good start. Also a terrific start by Kawamoto in lane number seven. As they lead, though, through the 25, Cooper in front. The Australian will come up and come up in front. Lane two, though, Murphy's finishing hard. It is Cooper who's going to take it out. World junior record. Wonderful effort by the 18-year-old Australian. So he's broken the mark by Kolesnikov of 22.77. And he's smashed it. He's taken a quarter of a second off it. 22.52. Wow, that's impressive from Isaac Cooper. The fearless Isaac Cooper. Personal best this morning. Smashes the Australian record tonight and the World Junior mark as well. Really good, just flipping from his back to his front. This is the finish here. Murphy popped up ahead of the turn, but Cooper swam away from him. He's had a change in coach, Ashley Delaney, up at St Andrews on the Sunshine Coast, doing a marvellous job with Isaac Cooper. The results of semi-final number one. Yes, a world junior record there to the Australian Cooper. The American Murphy second. Carter of Trinidad and Tobago third. Wow, the final's going to be interesting. Very, very interesting. Once we find out who's in semi-final two. But what a win in semi-final one. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the swimmers in the second semi-final of the men's 50-meter backstroke. In lane eight, representing Poland, Saori Masu. Kasuri Masu in lane eight, the 18-year-old. Bronze medalist in this event at the Long Course World Championships. Swimming in lane one, representing Czech Republic, Tomas Franta. So Thomas Franta now, 24 years of age. This is uh, his fourth World Short Course Championships. An experienced swimmer. In lane seven, representing Germany, Ole Bronsois. Germany represented in lane seven, Bronsois. Finalist in Budapest this summer. In lane two, representing United States of America, Hunter Armstrong. Second in the 50 at the Long Course World Championships in Budapest, the 21-year-old Hunter Armstrong of the USA. 
in lane six, representing Romania, Andre Misha Angel. Angel from Romania, big personal best this morning. He went a little past 15 meters. He'll have to be careful tonight. In lane three, representing Italy, Lorenzo Mora. Lorenzo Mora, the Italian, who's won gold, three silver, and one bronze at World Short Course Championships. He knows In lane five, about. representing South Africa, Peter Kotze. The world champion in the 100 back was Peter Kotze, still only 18 years of age, 23.01 this morning. And in lane four, representing Poland, Kasper Zukowski. Kasper Zukowski setting a championship record in the heats this morning, 22.78, 23-year-old Pole. Stakowski in four, the 18-year-old Peter Kotzer of South Africa in lane number five. This is semi-final two of the men's 50 backstroke. This is the second semi-final the men's 50 backstroke. Hunter Armstrong, the long course world record holder, sneaking up there in lane two. And girl, lightning quick underwater this morning. As we wait for Stokowski. Just about right here. Semi final two. Take your marks. Away, the two white caps in four and five, Stokowski and Kotzer. And uh, first up in lane number three, it's the Italian Mora. He's uh, got a nice little lead as they go down towards the halfway point. Also, their Franta in lane number one as they come down for the second lap. And now they start to put their foot down. Mora, Stokowski. Stokowski should get this. It's going to be right on the touch. Stokowski it is. Puts in second and then Mora. Close racing again. That's what you expect in the 50s. 22.74. 22.74 for Kasper Stokowski of Poland. Yeah, good second half of that race there for Stokowski. Off the start, nothing separated them. The underwater kicking at the world level on the men's side is, is absolutely incredible. You've got to be truly world-class just to compete. That was Engel there in that blue suit. He went a long way underwater. It was Franta that turned first at the 25. But once they popped up, Stokowski pulled away. Kotze, the tall 18-year-old South African, finished strongly to touch in second. And Mora as well, the Italian in the black cap, also having a really strong performance. They're gonna have a look at this one. I think it might have been Engel's start in lane six. In fact, I understand there's not just one review, or they're not reviewing one particular part of the race, but multiple parts of it. So, yes, uh, don't put down your glasses just yet. They no longer need to review the backstroke finish after what we saw in Budapest this year with Justin Ress. You are now allowed to be fully submerged to the finish. There's Amgel, third from the bottom. Clearly ahead over 15 metres there. He did it this morning. Didn't get disqualified in the heats. Off the turn, I was watching him. Third from the bottom in the blue suit. Comes up, right, that's okay. Just in front of that 15 metre mark. He won't factor into the final anyway. There are a few sneaky boys there tonight in this semi. We'll see what the officials come up with at the conclusion of this review. 
Okay, the results have come through. Let's uh, have a look at them now. We've got two disqualifications, uh, Franta and Gell, as you indicated, Bobby. So two disqualifications. Stokowski, though, from Kutzer and uh, Mora. Those violations over the 15 metres, as you indicated. So through to the final. Cooper and Murphy, Stokowski, Kutzer. Cartamora, Ulrich and Acevedo. Well, we're going to have a swim off. Acevedo, 23.05. Same time as Christou, same time as Hunter. A three-way swim off coming up to determine the eighth spot and then the first reserve. Oh, three-way swim off with a lot on the line here for the last spot in the final. It's been an exciting start. Let's start dishing out the medals now. The women's 100 free. Ladies and gentlemen, the medal ceremony for the women's 100 metre freestyle. The medals will be presented by four time Olympic champion, Miss Kate Campbell. Winner of the bronze medal, representing Netherlands, Marit Steenbergen. Winner of the silver medal, representing Hong Kong, China, Shimon Hohe. World champion and winner of the gold medal, representing Australia, Emma McKeon. Magnificent race, and what a popular win. Great crowd here tonight to watch McKeon claim gold. They've been in for a treat here in Melbourne, Australia on top of the medal tally. Kate Campbell, the reigning world record holder, presenting the medals. Great swim from Marit Steenberg, and she's been improving the tall swimmer from the Netherlands. And Siobhan Horhe, 200 meter free world record holder. She finished like a 200 meter swimmer. She was charging home. Couldn't quite get there on the touch. And a really nice rivalry developing here between Hawkey and McKeon. First and second at the Olympics last year. First and second again here in Melbourne. A nice little moment there between Kate Campbell and the world champion, Emma McKeon. And the mum and grandparents in the stands watching on. Of course, Kate Campbell. Ladies and gentlemen, the national teammates in so many successful Australia. relays over recent years. say Susie Woodhouse in the stands, sister of Robbie Woodhouse. Their dad was a great swimmer as well. It's uh, in the genes, isn't it, from the uh, McKeon family? We've got the pedigree of the Pallister family and gets even stronger with the McKeons. Ron McKeon coaching Emma for the majority of her career. Now with the great Michael Bowl. Wasn't Emma's mother on camera before, but it was somebody that looked extremely like her. They were the grandparents, though. The Woodhouse family also, with strong roots tying back to the Australian swimming scene. And uh, this will be an important lap of honour here. A lot of cameras and photographers on McKeon and and her other half as well.
Well, Australia winning this event for the first time since uh, how far do you have to go back? Only 2016, Brittany Elmsley won it in Windsor, Canada. Before that, Libby Leeton won in Indianapolis and Shanghai. So only the third time in Australians won the 100 free at World Short Course Championships. There's Cody Simpson, regular on poolside now, with his own career on the up. And McKeon, I'm sure she'd love a world record next few years before she's done an individual world record that truly would be the icing on the cake she'll race a 50 freestyle here in Melbourne too we're about to move along to the women's 200 meters butterfly final swimming in lane eight representing Bosnia and Herzegovina Lana Puda 16 year old Lana Puda bronze medalist in this race Swimming in lane last one, year. representing Australia, Elizabeth Decker. Elizabeth Decker would have been aware of that ceremony a moment ago. Give her a big boost. She was a finalist in Budapest, the winner of the Commonwealth Games. Swimming in lane seven, representing Japan, Yuchida Karin. Yuchida from Japan in seven, 22 years of age. This is her first ever World Championships. Swimming in lane two, representing Japan, Mitsui Aiki. Mitsui is only 18 years of age. This is her first World Championships. Swimming in lane six, representing Finland, Laura Latinen. The flying Finn, Laura Latinen. Had a strong junior career, now gets her first semi-final. Swimming in lane three, representing Denmark, Helena Bach. Helena Bach, the 22-year-old Dane, she was uh, a finalist in Budapest, she finished seventh there. Swimming in lane five, representing United States of America, Haley Flickener. Flickener from the United States, first of two Americans, silver medalist at the World Championships in Budapest. And swimming in lane four, representing United States of America, Dakota Luther. Dakota Luther at her first World Championships, 23 years of age. She's got a best time of 203.73. It's a race of many chances here. The women's 200 bait meters butterfly. The Americans in four and five, Luther and Flickinger. Shaping as an open affair. Flickinger, you would think, will go in as the favourite, but with the second fastest time here. Yeah, the Americans in the middle of the pool. Huda, the bronze medalist, me and eight. The Japanese also well represented with two swings in this final. Surprisingly, they'll ask to stand down. Two Americans eyeballing each other in four and five. Take your marks. Away they go. Luther dwelling on the blocks just a tick. Flickinger and Lartanen in lane number six away well. Flickinger, as we mentioned, the 28-year-old. Luther, younger at 23. And the 16-year-old down there in lane number eight, Lana Puda, is away nicely for Bosnia and Herzegovina. Yeah, swimming well there in the white cap is Puda. It was from Abu Dhabi. 
still only 16, so we're getting some valuable finals experience here in Melbourne. There's no real standout in this race, as you mentioned. Looking at the most accomplished of the lot, but that's in the long course pool. We haven't seen a race short course meters at any point in her career. So the Americans in the middle of the pool. Luther had a breakout swim this morning, personal best time, and she's relatively inexperienced at 23 years of age. But the Americans out in front, Decker swimming good. She's on that side in front of her uh, teammates and crowd there. The Australians sitting across that lane, one side of the pool but out just over world record pace, flicking up, really pushing the speed at the 100 meter mark. We'll keep an eye on the championship record as well, the yellow line for the championship record when that's under threat. Of course, the red line for the world record. So they've gone 125 now. They've got three laps to go. It's the Americans who are setting the pace here. They're one two at the moment. With Flickner in front of the, the championship record and in front of Uber. And in third place at the moment, it's Decker's in lane one. She's not too far back. Decker's having a great swim to touch third there. With 50 to go. One of these Americans is going to really tie up. Flickner now just starting to get a little bit shorter. Deckers, we know she can butterfly all day. The crowd get on their feet. They can sense Deckers coming a little long onto that turn. It's Luther who now touches turns in front. Luther with a big underwater. Luther in front. Flicking is dropping back. Flying home is Deckers. But it's Luther in front. They won't catch her. They won't catch her. It's going to be a goal to the United States through Dakota Luther Silver for Haley Flicker. And Elizabeth Deckers takes bronze. Exciting finish there, Dakota Luther crowns herself world champion here in Melbourne and claws another gold medal back for Team USA. First and second for the Americans there. Luther in that bluish suit, swimming from lane four. She swam a huge heat swim this morning to be the fastest qualifier for this final. As we said, no real standouts here. The, the depth of the women's butterfly in world swimming in the 200 metre distance just doesn't seem to be there at the moment. Deckers gave it an almighty shake from lane one. The crowd were urging her, but Luther finished the strongest. 203 3 swim and improves from her morning swim and executes under pressure, which is so important to do at this level. Put your best race together in the final when the medals are on the line. Dakota Luther takes the gold. Luther in 203.37, a world champion. Flickinger, 203.78, and Decker's 203.94. The United States gold and silver, Australia bronze in the women's 200 metres butterfly final. Wow, I tell you what, Dakota, I think that smile says it all. World champion! Thank you, thank you. I mean, you, you had an amazing PB this morning, a great race. You did it again. It's all sort of fallen into place for you this week and kind of when it really needed to. Uh, talk us through that. What do you put that down to? Um, it's been a while since I've swam short course meters, but like watching Team USA swim the last few days, I was just ready to go, ready to like put it all on the line. And you did. I, I, the two flies really taxing on the body. So how are you feeling now? You, le you don't look like you're blowing too hard for a massive PB. I feel pretty good. I mean, when you look up there and see a good swim, the pain kind of goes away. So. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for your new world champion, Dakota Luther. The pain goes away. Luther and clicking up first and second. The men's 200 metres butterfly final comes your way next with Tamora Honda, the world record holder. He set that mark this year, 146.85. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the swimmers in the final of the men's 200 metre butterfly. Swimming in lane eight, representing Italy, Alberto Rossetti. The defending champion, Rossetti, in lane eight here. He's got work to do in that outside lane. 
swimming in lane one, representing Canada, Ilya Karun. Ilya Karun's just 17 years of age. Boy, what a future he has. Three times in Melbourne, he has lowered the world junior mark in various events. In lane seven, representing Estonia, Krego Zoo. So, the Estonian record holder, fifth in this event last year in Abu Dhabi. Swimming in lane two, representing Switzerland, No Ponty. No Ponty was the silver medalist in the 50, up to the 200 here, where he was fifth at the Budapest World Championships. Swimming in lane six, representing Japan, Morimoto Pepe. First of the Japanese swimmers, Morimoto, 20-year-old from Japan, making his World Championship debut in Melbourne. Swimming in lane three, representing Japan, Seto Daya. Gold medalist in the 400 medley back in 2012. He's won seven World Short Course Championship golds and 14 medals Swimming in lane five, representing South Africa, Chad Leclerc. Leclerc, 18 World Short Course medals. He's won this event four times, dating back to 2010. Swimming in lane four, representing United States of America, Trenton Julian. Trenton Julian. The United States, member of the gold medal winning 4x200 metres relay team in Tokyo, who was fourth in this event in Abu Dhabi. There's the field for the men's 200 metres butterfly, Trenton Julian, Chad Leclerc in lane number five, and the defending champion, Alberto Rossetti, in lane eight. This is going to be good. Three former champions in this race. And Julian, watch for him to fly out through the first 150 metres. Again, the starter asking them to stand down. Julian in four just gets himself so fired up behind the blocks for a 200 fly. He can hear himself slapping his arms, stamping on the block. Away they go, Julian in the black cap in lane four. Leclerc, white cap, lane number five, and we watch for Rossetti down there in lane eight in the black as well as they complete the first of eight laps here. This is the men's 200 butterfly final. Oh, look at that relaxed first 25 of Leclerc in the white cap. He used to go out fast. He's going to leave that to Julian here in Melbourne. Julian loves the fly and die strategy. We'll lead this through the first 150 metres, no doubt. And Leclerc's trying to work his back end again. Seto's there above him, above those yellow lanes in the black cap. Former world record holder in this event is Dai Seto, but not quite at his best here in Melbourne. And the swimmer that I really like is Noe Ponti. Had a great 50 fly last night in the red cap of Switzerland. You cannot rule Ponti out of this. Well, as they get to the halfway mark, uh, world record is under threat here. Julian going through in 51-23. Seto second. And uh, back there in third place, probably Ponti the close within striking distance. And so too Rossetti down there in lane number eight, the defending champion. Yeah, no lead's going to be too big for Julian. Because through that last 25, he can really tighten up, just like we saw from Flickener in the women's race. Seto with a strong third lap. He's made his move a little bit early. Watch for Leclerc. We know Leclerc's got the best underwaters in this event in history. Staying under now is Leclerc, pulling up on the shoulder of Julian. It's a three-way battle. Julian's going backwards. It's Leclerc and Seto. Look at Leclerc go. Chad Leclerc. 
an absolute superstar in South Africa, and he's well out in front. He pushes off the wall, and he's surging towards the gold medal here. Chad Leclerc, what a performance, what a return to form. Seto takes silver and putting the bronze. Chad Leclerc, world championship medal number 19 in total. And his fifth victory in this event. Chad Leclerc. 2.0, he's back, Chad, back on top, and look how much that means to him. He's gone through hell and back. A disappointing Tokyo Olympics last year, points to his dad in the stands. And a personal best time for Leclerc at 30 years of age. Perfects the short course 200 meter butterfly event. Seto there, the rivals just congratulating each other. Choose that lead. Changed three times in the last 50 metres. Julian faded back to seventh, did the American. He's got to figure out the better way to swim this, but Leclerc first won this event back in 2010 in Dubai as an 18-year-old. And 12 years on, he still holds the crown in this short course 200 butterfly. There's his dad, Bert, in the stands. Bert in the black. <laughs> Bert is uh, a fixture at World Championships. He is the biggest supporter of Chad Leclerc you could possibly imagine. Looks as if Bert swings every stroke. Chad Leclerc, 148.27. Seto the silver and Ponty the bronze. What a performance by the South African. Well done, Chad Leclerc. Oh, Chad, I can, we can obviously all see just how much this means to you, mate. It's been an incredible comeback, world champion. You got your, your dad in the crowd. Just talk us through, you know, what, what's going on? Oh, man, I'm, I'm sorry for being emotional. Oh, man, this is a big win for me. I've taken so many losses in the last two years. A lot of people doubted me. The swimming world doubted me. But the king is back. Thank you very much. Yes, King Chad is back. I know you spoke about this, Chad, 2.0. The last, the last year has been a big year. You're coming back and really pulling out these world-class performances. What are you sort of putting this down to, to, to sort of accommodate in that moment? You know what, I had a change of mindset. I was fighting too much with myself and trying to, desperate man, swimming. I want a big thank you to my coach, Dirt Langer, for all the changes he's made in the last 10 weeks. You know, just like we said in Gladiator, we smelt that dirt. We came up prepared for war. Australia, thank you very much, guys. God bless you all. We'll be back in 100. Get it, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for Chad McClough. Oh, dear. What a special moment for the Leclerc family. We haven't seen this type of emotion from Chad at any point in his career. Personal best at 30 years of age. Big congratulations to his new coach, Dirk Langer, moved to Germany to train in this program. It's only been 10 weeks, and look at the results of fit and firing Chad Leclerc. The king is back, said Chad. <laughs> oh, dear. No one celebrates like Bert Leclerc. We'll pause now for the, another medal ceremony. The men's 100 metres freestyle. Ladies and gentlemen, the medal ceremony for the men's 100 metre freestyle. The medals will be presented by World Aquatics Bureau member and Chair of Athletes Committee, Miss Alia Atkinson. Winner of the bronze medal, representing Italy, Alessandro Meresti. Winner of the silver medal, representing France, Maxime Cruce. World champion and winner of the gold medal, representing Australia, Kyle Chalmers.
championship record time as well for Chalmers. A lot of championship records going down. It's been a much faster meet than anyone could have expected here in Melbourne so far. Moresi, the defending champion, he'll be happy to be on the podium. This time round matches his performance from Abu Dhabi. And Rousseau, silver in the long course, world champs in Budapest, silver again here in Melbourne. It's going to be a star on that path to Paris. Isn't it good seeing Alia Atkinson back Thank here? You. The Jamaican, such a sensational swimmer, particularly over short course, over so many years. And she was competing and winning in Abu Dhabi last time around. But Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of Australia. First individual world title, the first of his career. And uh, when you look at his record, he's only been beaten a handful of times since he broke out in Rio to win the Olympic Games as an 18-year-old. Touched out by Dressel in Tokyo last year. Bounced back to break the short course world record post those Olympic Games and has carried that fantastic form through to the 2022 season. Amongst a lot of noise and a lot of changes in the career and the life of Kyle Chalmers, but his swimming remains at an impeccable level. Gold here in the men's 100 freestyle. And he's got another race coming up, the last race of the night. He'll be anchoring the four by 50 meters freestyle relay. So a lot will be on his shoulders there. Not a particularly experienced lineup. And if Australia is to have a chance, uh, a lot will depend upon Kyle Chalmers. He loves racing. Big last 25 for Chalmers. And he ended up winning in a championship record time. And it was a decent margin in short course swimming. There he is, claiming that one. I'm sure he'll get a new tattoo to commemorate this performance in Melbourne. Well, I called him King Kyle in the call, but I'm a bit confused because Chad LeClove declared himself the king a moment ago. Different events. The women's 100 metres breaststroke. It's the final coming your way shortly, and uh, Rudamelia Tita will be very hard to beat. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the swimmers in the final of the women's 100 meter breaststroke. Swimming in lane eight, representing Germany, Anna Alent. Anna Alent in lane eight. She was the silver medalist in the long course 100 breast this past summer. In lane one, representing Japan, Fukusawa Mai. So uh, Fukasawa, uh, 24 years of age, appearing in the first World Short Course Championship, the best of 104.45. Swimming in lane seven, representing People's Republic of China, Tang Kian Ting. Here's Tang in seven, the defending champion, only 18 years of age. Swimming in lane two, representing South Africa, Laura Van Niekerk. 
And New Kirk, the 19-year-old, she was uh, the bronze medalist in the 50 in the Budapest World Championships. In lane six, representing Netherlands, Tess Schaffen. Schaffen in six. Olympian last year in Tokyo, representing the Netherlands. In lane three, representing Japan, Aoki Reona. Aoki was a semi-finalist in the 200 at the Windsor World Championships. That was six years ago. In lane five, representing Lithuania, Ruta Melitsitsa. Joint world record holder, Ruta Melitsitsa, swimming in lane five. The second part in lane of her four, career now. representing United States of America, Lily King. She's won four golds at World Short Course Championships, including the 50 in 2016. Lily King. King and Melutite showing no love last night. They're swimming alongside each other here. Here's the field for the next of the finals. The women's 100 metres breaststroke. King, the United States. Amelia Tite, the winner in 2012, and the defending champion in seven is Tang. Yeah, I expect this to be a battle in those middle yellow lanes. There's a bit of noise last night. King and Amelia Tite faced off in the semis. Away they go, the women's 100 metres breaststroke final. So in four, it's King, in five, it's Melitite. They're only about five weeks apart in terms of age, and they are great, great rivals. What a start this is by Melitite. Oh, isn't she explosive off the blocks? The Lithuanian in five, opening up a nice little lead here in the early part of this 100 breaststroke. King, all focusing on the longer events now. You can see it just swimming Melutite down as they come into the 50 metre wall, under world record pace, well under world record pace by almost a full half a second. So Melutite still a half body length in front. King's moving well though. King is starting to decrease that margin. It was a quarter of a second as they turned. And now it's much the same though. Melutite in front of King. And it's Van Niekerk in third as they bring it home now. World record under threat once again. It's Melutite. King. King is probably finishing stronger. King over Melutite. The American will win it. King takes it. Melutite the silver. And shooting the bronze. Lily King. At 25 years of age. She is over the moon. She slaps the water once again. What a beautiful last 25 metres there from Lily King. The Olympic champion from Rio. She was disappointed herself in Tokyo last year. Still on the podium, but now climbs back on top of the World Championship dice. That was the 75 metre turn. Lily Tite explosive on those pullouts. Pulls away off the walls every time. And King was just chasing her down, hunting, stroking. Not much separating them. She was a little long on the finish. She risked it. Melitite, not quite enough. And as we said last night, they faced off in the semis. She got the mental victory over Ruta last night. And she claims the gold in the 100 breaststroke final tonight. So gold oh. to the United States. King, 102.67. Melitite disqualified. We missed that. Gee. So there goes the silver medal for Lithuania. Shooting. It might have been for something on the start, but it definitely wasn't a long video review. The official call is more than one underwater dolphin kick off the start. The swimmers only allowed one dolphin kick and pull out before they need to surface and break out. And Lily, it's always great to watch you race the hunter breast. It's a battle between you and Ruta, but a great one and for you to come out on top of.
Yeah, definitely. Um, that's, a, that's a world title I've wanted to have for a really long time. So uh, glad I got to get in and get that one done. And I mean, Team USA has been performing amazingly this whole week. The team's looking super strong, pulling out all the stops. A little bit of an insp inspiration watching them get that world record the other night. Absolutely. I mean, anytime we get to get a world record, it's a good night. So uh, we love swimming short course meters, and it's something that's starting to become a little more familiar to us. And uh, I think we're getting the hang of it. You certainly are. Ladies and gentlemen, she did it against Lily King, world champion. Yeah, and that storyline's going to become important. Since Australia won the women's and men's 100 freestyle to begin tonight's program, the United States have bounced back with another two gold medals. That's a replay of the start. Millie Tite didn't false start, but it was the ruling was two underwater kicks off the pullout. And she does get a distinct advantage off that first 15 metres, normally because she's off the block so quick, but the officials using... The underwater technology to make that call. Now to the men's 100 metres breaststroke final. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the swimmers in the final of the men's 100 metre breaststroke. Swimming in lane eight, representing France, Antoine Vicarat. Frenchman Vicarat swimming in lane eight, Olympian in Tokyo last year. Swimming in lane one, representing Germany, Lukas Maserat. Maserat was a final at Budapest. He finished sixth. Swimming in lane seven, representing Japan, Hinamoto Yuya. Hinamoto from Japan, 25-year-old. It's a personal best of 55.77. In lane two, representing Italy, Simone Cirasuolo. Cirasuolo is the world junior record holder, the 19-year-old Italian with a time of 56.66. In lane six, representing Great Britain, Adam Peaty. We see Adam Peaty here, racing in Melbourne, former world record holder in this event, but yet to win short course gold. In lane three, representing level. People's Republic of China, Sin. Hey, yeah. from China, the 23-year-old. He was second in the 200 in uh, 2018 in his home country. In lane five, representing United States of America, Nick Fink. The American Nick Fink. Bronze in this event in Abu Dhabi, but he won the 50 and the 200 last year. And in lane four, representing Italy, Nicola. Martinecki. And Martinecki, the Italian, the world champion from Budapest, and the bronze medalist at the Tokyo Olympics. That event won by Adam Peaty. The men's 100 metres breaststroke final with the world champion from Budapest, Martin Engi in four, Fink of the United States in five, and Petey the Olympic champion in six. Let's see what Petey can do in the short course pool. Won the last two Olympic titles in this 100 meter breaststroke event. Still rocking the moustache. Martin Engi. well think not so well lane five Martin Engi in lane four and first to come up well it looks as if it's going to be Fink yeah monster pull out there from the American Fink loves the short course racing was hugely successful last year in Abu Dhabi and he's chasing gold here in this hundred breast out aggressively is Fink below him in that red cap that's Adam Peaty watch for him to move through as the race goes on but Fink turns just over world record pace Martinegi's back there in fifth. We'll see if the Italian can start to swim a little bit stronger on this third 25. It's still Fink, but look at Petey go in the red cap. Petey's probably still third at the moment. Fink and Martinegi. And Petey's within striking distance as they turn to bring it home now. 
And in lane number five, it's the American Fink. Oh, he's starting to draw clear here. Fink in front. Martin Engie second. And it's going to be Petey in third. Fink takes another gold medal for the United States. He takes the one that was missing from 12 months ago. Becomes the 100 breaststroke world champion. At 29 years of age, Nick Fink continues to get better and better and better. And that was a clutch win against some hot competition. Petey touching third. You mentioned Fink slow off the blocks, but he's so strong on those pullouts. He dominated the start. And coming into this third turn, it was pretty tight. Martin Engi pulled up beside him, but as they push off, just that motion, one kick, one pull down, he gets about a meter clear. And Petey there in the red cap had a long glide on the finish. We can't see it there on screen. Fink getting the job done. We'll see if he can aim for the treble of breaststroke events in Melbourne. That's the first one. Gold in the men's 100 breast. Fink the gold, Martin Engi taking the silver, Petey the bronze, the USA, Italy and Great Britain in the men's 100 breaststroke. Well done, Nick Fink. Well, congratulations, Nick. Uh, last year, Abu Dhabi was the 50 and the 200. We've added the 100 to the collection. It's an amazing race as well. Yeah, yeah, I knew. I was missing that one, got the other two last time, so it was good to, good to kind of complete the trifecta. Yeah. And I mean, it was a, such a strong field out there. I had no idea which way that was going to go. Came down to that final 25. As you head into that wall, you know, sort of, what were you thinking? Could you spot the boys? I wasn't thinking. It was, it was all black, just get to the wall. I knew those guys were coming in hot at the end, and... Like you said, terrific field. Even I didn't know who's going to win or what the race is going to be. So it was, put your head down and just try to get to the wall. And he came out on top. We love to see you. Congratulations. World champion, ladies and gentlemen, Nick Fink. That's 29 years of age. The Americans getting great success from Nick Fink these days. They also get great success from Bobby Fink in the 8 and 1500 metres, but no relation, in fact, spelt differently, pronounced the same, the two things. Back-to-back -back gold medals, though, for the United States here with uh, Lily King in the 100 for women, and now Nick King, uh, Nick Fink in the one, uh, 100 breaststroke as far as the men are concerned. And, of course, earlier, it was gold in the 200 metres butterfly for women. And, uh, well, well, Australia see. opened the night with two gold medals, and the USA have responded by winning the next three finals. Let's uh, join the winners for the women's 200 metres butterfly medal ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, the medal ceremony for the women's 200 metre butterfly. The medals will be presented by World Aquatics Bureau member, Mr. Daiichi Suzuki. Winner of the bronze medal, representing Australia, Elizabeth Deckers. Winner of the silver medal, representing United States of America, Haley Flickinger. World champion and winner of the gold medal, representing United States of America, Dakota Luther. So that was one of now three gold medals for the United States this evening. Dakota Luther, at 23 years of age, taking out the 200 metres butterfly final. Yeah, Deck is there. Had a great swim, the 18 year old on her first world championship podium now, receiving her bronze medal. But I couldn't quite match her with the two Americans. Flicking her now. Silver in Melbourne, silver in Budapest, silver in Guangzhou. 19 in the long course pool. No silvers for this lady. Dakota Luther, world champion in the women's 200 butterfly. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of United States of America. The United States are on a bit of a roll now. Dakota Luther with that victory. And there'll be two more presentations going the way of the Americans already this evening with Lily King and Nick Fink. Great battle brewing between the host nation Australia and the United States in terms of the gold medal count. You know, when we look at these previous results at World Short Course Championships, they keep throwing up surprises. This is the first time an American's won this event since Indianapolis back in 2004 when it was Caitlin Sandino. And that was um, actually correction. Mary Desenza, the ever-smiling Mary Desenza, won it in uh, Manchester in 2008. But since then, it's been dominated by Katinka Hosu and Maria Belmonte and most recently, Zhang Yufei won in Abu Dhabi. Yes, Belmonte not officially retired at this point in her career. That world record, 159. Unbelievable. Luther there winning today in a 2.03, so it's about four seconds off. Belmonte and Hoshu had some great battles through the mid 2010s in the flies and the IMs. But here in Melbourne, the star is Dakota Luther. She did compete back at the 2017 World Championships in Budapest, long course there, semi-finalist. She's waited five long years to get a chance at the international level again. Tinka Hoshu is the world record holder here. Ladies and gentlemen, 50, please 51. welcome the swimmers in the first semi-final of the women's 100-meter individual medley. In lane eight, representing Australia, Kayla Hardy. Kayla Hardy making her Australian team debut, 19 years of age, swimming from lane in eight. In lane one, representing Spain, Africa, Zamorano Sanz. Zamora mode. Spain at the second world short In lane seven, representing Sweden, Emilie Fast. Emilie Fast from Sweden. Swimming out of seven, she was an Olympian last year in Tokyo. In lane two, representing Japan, Ohashi Yui. Ohashi won the 200 400 medley double at the Tokyo Olympics. In lane six, representing South Africa, Rebecca Meter. Meter in six. This is her fourth World Championships. Only 20 years of age is the South African. In lane three, representing France, Beryl Gastadello. She is the silver medalist in this event in Abu Dhabi, Gastadello of France. In lane five, representing Canada, Mary Sophie Harvey. Harvey in five, 58 9 this morning, one of the fastest qualifiers in this event. In lane four, representing Netherlands, Mark Steenbergen. Steenbergen in the water again this evening. The relay silver medalist for the 4x100 metres of the Olympics. She's won two bronze at World Short Course Championships. 
Semi-final one of the women's 100 metres individual medley. Steenberg from the Netherlands and Harvey Canada in four and five. Gastel Dello, silver medalist in Abu Dhabi in three. Medley swimmer, Bahashi, the Olympic champion. So the shortest of the medleys here, the 100 medley, 25 metres each of butterfly, backstroke, breaststroke and free. Blocks there, Gastadello in lane number three, Steenbergen and Harvey in four and five, and uh, in lane five, Harvey's away nicely. Yeah, not much separates them off the start. We expect Gastadello to get out there quickly. She's a powerful butterfly and freestyle sprinter, and she's really strong underwater. Steenbergen it is, that looks good in lane four now. The bronze medal is from the 100 freestyle, so we know she's going to be really strong on that fourth lap, but in fact, she leads at the 50 metre mark. So we're seeing Marit Steenbergen really break out here in Melbourne into swimming. New events and really showing her class here through the breaststroke. She's not going to let him go past her. She opens up that lead. Let's watch Steenbergen on this last lap. Into the freestyle they go and uh, a short lead becomes a big lead once they get into the freestyle. And Steenbergen is going to cruise to a win here in front of Gastaldello. It's going to be tight for third, no doubt about the winner though from the Netherlands. Steenbergen, Gastaldello, and neither it was who got up for third for South Africa. Winning time here in semi-final one, 57-65. She's on fire tonight. Aaron Steenbergen, barely puffing, thumbs up to the coach. What a performance. Bronze in the 100 freestyle about an hour and a half ago. Personal best in that event, and she backs up for a really controlled looking semi final. She blew away the field on the second 50 meters of this race. We knew she's a strong freestyler, but the last couple of strokes of the breaststroke, she pulled away from the field. If she has a lead at the 75 metre mark tomorrow, no one's going to be able to chase her down. Steenbergen, the victor in semi-final one from Gastadello and Mita. And the Netherlands, France and South Africa, followed then by Harvey of Canada. So one more semi-final here. We've still got three finals to go, so stay with us here at the Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre. Semi-final two now. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the swimmers in the second semi-final of the women's 100 metres individual medley. Swimming in lane eight, representing Bulgaria, Diana Petkova. Petkova in eight. 22-year-old Olympic representative for Bulgaria last year. In lane one, representing Slovakia, come on, Potoka. Potoka, and lane number one here, the 20-year-old. She's got a best time of 59-69 at her third world championships. In lane seven, representing Canada, Sydney Pickram. Sydney Pickram, 200 IM winner from Abu Dhabi last year, trying her hand at the shorter medley distance. In lane two, representing Slovenia, Neza Planka. Planka, the 22-year-old Slovenian in lane two, the best of 59-42. She swam that in the heats. In lane six, representing Austria, Lena Krundul. Krundul in six. This is her fifth World Short Course Championships. The in lane three, representing basic. Italy, Costanza Cocconcelli. Cocconcelli is a 20-year-old from Italy. She was a relay bronze medalist in Abu Dhabi 12 months ago. In lane five, representing New Zealand, Helena Gasson. Gasson in five, veteran of the field at 28 years of age. In lane four, representing Sweden, Louise Hansen. And Louise Hansen. 
in lane number four here, a winner of three gold and seven medals in total at World Short Course Championships. Semi-final two looking like this with Hansen and Gasson, Sweden and New Zealand in lanes four and five. Coconcelli of Italy in lane number three. Pickram, watch for her in seven. This is the second semi-final of the women's 100-meter individual medley. Swimsuit there is Gasson in lane Three, number seven, five. Hansen gets a great start there in lane four. Yeah, Hansen's the butterfly backstroke specialist. She was under world record pace at the halfway mark this morning in the heats. She doesn't normally swim this individual medley, but she was great through the first 50 meters. Gasson there from New Zealand trying to go with her. Gasson, they're both pushing the world record line, in fact, through the first two laps. It's going to be Hansen. As they take it into the breaststroke, the all-important breaststroke here. And Hansen comes up, and she's really extended the lead. What a push off the wall there by the Swede. Now Gasson starting to close the gap a little, so it's going to be a race to the finish here, with Hansen in front by 11 hundredths of a second over Gasson. And third place is Pickle down there in lane number seven. But a good turn there from Hansen. Hansen's cruised away now. It's a race for second. Pickle should get there. But uh, very, very controlled by Hansen in the end. Pickle second. And third place was good there. 58.05. Hansen taking out semi final number two. Just a little bit off what we saw in the previous from Steenbergen. Gas on there in that pink suit really matched the opening speed of Louise Hansen. She paid for it at the back end of that one, but it was a huge back to breast turn from Hansen. Got a body length over Gas on just on that skill portion of the race. The margin there at the end. Pickram swam well from seven on the right of screen. Hanson, Pickram and Grundle in that order. 58.05 and 58.54, first and second. Second semi-final of the women's 100 metres individual medley, which means we can determine who goes through to the final, who swims for gold, silver and bronze. These are the eight swimmers who will be contesting the final. Steenbergen's going to be hard to beat. Hansen, Pickram, Gastodello, Mida, Krundel, Harvey and Gasson. The time 59.15 for the New Zealander. And uh, Klanka, 59.27 is uh, the ninth fastest, so she misses out. It's a beautiful evening in Melbourne. The weather's starting to improve, which is great. Great for spectators here at the semi-open air Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre. What a great venue for the World Championships. We've got a medal ceremony coming up. This is going to be emotional. The men's 200 metres butterfly. Ladies and gentlemen, the medal ceremony for the men's 200 metre butterfly. The medals will be presented by World Aquatics Bureau member, Mr. Fernando Campina Perez. Winner of the bronze medal, representing Switzerland, Noam Ponti. Winner of the silver medal, representing Japan, Daiseto. World champion and winner of the gold medal, representing South Africa, Chad Leclerc.
He was emotional, he's made big changes to his program at 30 years of age, and one of the greatest showmen in international swimming is back, Chad Leclerc. Yeah, he's back indeed, Leclerc on top, Poxy there. Another great performance, second medal of the championships after his silver in the 50 fly. He's going to be a tough racer in that 100 meter distance, and Seto, we've seen him on so many podiums at this level in the past, so many great battles with the Clow over the past 10 years. And here's Chad Leclow, 2.0 he calls himself. He wins this event for the fifth time and a personal best at 30 years of age. Incredible performance. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of South Africa. See how much it means to Chad Leclerc. At 30 years of age, I, real, I guess he realises he probably doesn't have too many more world championships left. And he just seems so determined and, and focused now, more so than we've seen over most more recent uh, world championships. He used to throw his head around, he still likes to look around, but. He just is so determined now to make the most of every opportunity. Yeah, he's had a change in his coaching program, and I think the reevaluation after Tokyo last year was to make some changes outside of the pool with his life and his training, just to get refocused, like you said. And, and even from your side, without even knowing too many details, that corresponds to the way he races. You can see Chad confident, fast, skillful, focused. That seems to be the word. And he's producing his best. So he now lives and trains in Germany under the coaching guidance of Dirk Langer, who's had many Olympic medalists and world champions in his stable over the years. It just goes to show, he mentioned over the last 10 weeks, he's got that unbelievable ability but it's obviously a matter of tweaking things if you can do it in that short space of time this looks like a different Chad Lefeu than we have seen in more recent championships even back in Budapest when he was so successful in what 2017 he is so determined now and look at his dad his dad travels to all the big international meets and he's just as excited as Chad himself yeah, I think the COVID situation really made things difficult being based in South Africa with the, the lack of performance facilities they have. There's Bert Leclerc and Dirk Langer sharing a moment, all because of this guy. He wanted that one, and when Chad's on top, geez, he's going to be a tough racer to beat in that 100-meter race, 100 fly, still to come of these championships. We move along to the semi-finals now of the men's 100 metres individual medley. This will be short, sweet and exciting. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the swimmers in the first semifinal of the men's 100 meter individual medley. Lane eight, swimming for Norway, Marcus Lee. Here's Lee in lane eight. Six foot four, 27 years of age, gets his chance here in the semifinals. Swimming in lane one, representing Greek, Andrea Bazeo. Bazeo is 28 years of age, he's got a best of 51-54. First swim at the short course championships in 2014. Swimming Don't... in lane seven, representing Brazil, Leonardo Colos Santos. Colos Santos, swimming out of lane seven. Gold medalist back in 2018 in the four by 200 freestyle relay. In lane two, representing Israel, Yoko Tomaka. Tomaka is another experienced swimmer, also making his world short course debut in 2014. In lane six, representing Austria, Bernard Reitzhammer. Reitzhammer in six, bronze medalist in this race, 12 months ago in Abu Dhabi. In lane three, representing Italy, come on, Cheshaw. Winner is uh, the winner of the 100 metres backstroke of Budapest, Thomas Czech on the 21 year old from Italy. In lane five, representing Japan, Matsumoto Shuya. Matsumoto will represent Japan from lane five, making his world championship debut here in, in lane Melbourne. four, representing Canada, Kenley Knox. And the Canadian, the 21 year old, Finlay Knox. Just missed the semi-finals at the Olympics in the 200, finished 17th in the heats. It's an open field for the men's 100 metres individual medley with Finlay Knox and Shua. Matsumoto of Canada and Japan, respectively, in four and five. And the backstroke specialist, check on in lane three. Yeah, times will be important in this one. Less than a second separated all 16 semi finalists this morning in the heats. Santos will race in the blue cap. Semi-final number one, Matsumoto in five, getting away well, so too, and Knox as they go and complete the first butterfly leg. It looks like lane five, Matsumoto. Yeah, Finlay Knox in four. He's the informed individual medley swimmer in these championships, won a medal in the 200 IM on the first night of competition. He's a little behind at the moment. Moment, Matsumoto, really aggressive on that backstroke split. Check on as well, the Italians swimming above those yellow lanes. He likes to move through across the back half of this swim, and we wait for the move from Knox. Here comes Knox in the middle. Matsumoto, right hammer in lane number six. They will probably turn in front. In fact, it's right hammer just in front. It's check on in second place as they freestyle their way home. Down they go, up there in lane number one, Masayas. Masayas might almost be in front. He takes it out for the man from Greece. Check on in second with Knox in third. Andreas Masayas at his the world championships where he made his debut eight years ago, and now this is one of his best performances. Yeah, steals that one out of lane one. Does the Greek swimmer didn't really come into play until that breast to free turn. He's been European champion in the past. We've yet to see him fire at the world level, but he does so here in Melbourne. Knox was flying through the middle. Check on finished strongly as well, so the bigger name's still moving through, but nothing separates the swimmers in the first semi-final. Look at that finish. Four of them within less than a stroke. Matsumoto fades back to fifth after being the early leader. And a personal best time there for Andreas Vasayos. 
Great swim from lane one for Versailles, 51-47. 51-60 for Chepon, and Knox third, 51-64. Great racing. The short individual medley, just 25 metres of each of those strokes. And boy, it gets exciting. Lane one. Well, if you've got a lane, you've got a chance. That's been proven over the years, and you surprised a few people. Yeah, well, no. Caleb Dressel at these championships, who's the world record holder, and also the championship record holder, Kalashnikov, also here, so. On now to semi-final two. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the second semi-final in the men's 100 meter individual medley. Swimming in lane eight, representing Aruba, Mikhail Schroeder. Schroeder's in eight, 24 year old. Olympian last year, Olympian in Rio as well. Swimming in lane one, representing Austria, Heiko Gigler. Gigler at 26 years of age, the Austrian of his third world short course championship to get the medal. Swimming in lane seven, representing Brazil, Caio Pumputas. Pumputas from Brazil, finalist last year in Abu Dhabi in the 200 breaststroke. In lane two, representing Spain, Carles Colmarti. Colmarti is a 21-year-old who's got a best time of 52-32. He swims out of lane two. In lane six, representing United States of America, Michael Andrew. Former champion in this event from back in 2016, Michael Andrew, bronze medalist in 2018. In lane three, representing Canada, Javier Acevedo. Acevedo, the 24-year-old Canadian, who's uh, won one silver and two bronze at long course world championships. In lane five, representing United States of America, Shane Carson. The man, the fastest man in the world this year in this event, Shane Cassis. Swimming in lane five for the United States. And in lane four, representing France, Maxime Grousset. Grousset, who was the silver medalist earlier this evening in the 100 metres freestyle. He starts in lane four, the 23 year old Frenchman with a best time of 51 49. Semi-final two, the Americans in five and six. Casas and Andrew, the winner of this event six years ago. So, in lane number four. This is the second semi-final of the men's 100 meter individual medley. Andrew's had an up and down week here in Melbourne. Rousseau, fresh from a silver medal in that 100 freestyle earlier tonight. Cassis away quickly in lane number five. Alongside him, Grusso. It is the butterfly before they turn into the backstroke, then breaststroke and free. Yeah, he's in here. A total athlete off the blocks there, Cassis. Andrew touches first. But we'll watch Cassis here on his favourite backstroke leg. There he is surfacing now. The two black caps of the United States. They're in the early lead. Rousseau's within striking distance. He can chase them down across that freestyle leg. So Cassis now, a strong pull out. Nothing separates and this six across the pool. And Andrew and Cassis, they can't quite get a break on Rousseau. And Rousseau is hanging in there as indicated. Acevedo's not far away in lane number three. So now they've got to bring it home. And they're coming from everywhere. Grousseau's finishing faster than the ball. In lane number four, Grousseau and Leeds takes it out. And Grousseau and Casas, and then Acevedo. Maxime Grousseau of France, the winner of semi-final two. Impressive performance there. Chops half a second off his personal best. His teammates can't believe it. And it's the fastest time of the semis. Rousseau, we mentioned it earlier, a couple of silver medals at this level in the 100 freestyle. He might get his chance at gold in the individual medley. The Americans flew off the blocks there. Andrew and Cassis. 
They just don't seem to have it here in Melbourne. Cassis not swimming as quick as he was on the World Cup circuit. Andrew fading through that freestyle. is up against world-class freestyle. Freestylers with Rousseau and Acevedo. Here's the finish. Rousseau in that white cap. It's a handy margin. And it looks like it looks like this result might be under review. So we'll let you know when we know what the issue may be. But, uh, of course, they have to clarify everything and make sure they're entirely happy with all aspects of the race. And, of course, it's even more complicated with this event than probably any of them with the four strokes over such a short distance. Yeah, it's usually the turns that get a little bit tricky. Especially that back-to-breast turn where the swimmers must touch on their back before turning over and pushing off on their front. So the skill portion of this 100 IM is really important. Here's the race replay off the blocks. Clean on the start. They all surface before 15 metres. Coming down into... It the backstroke, like Rousseau was there through the first 25 metres. He really fell back. He had one of the slowest backstroke splits in the field. Cassis pulling away. We're going to watch the whole thing. Let's look at that turn from Rousseau. It almost looks like he rolls onto his front on that last stroke of backstroke. He had a strong second half. And he does touch the wall first, Rousseau. It was that previous turn, I think. That was the issue. And this is bad news for Grousseau. So first to the wall, but disqualified. The result of semi-final two. It means the United States go 1-2 with Andrew from Casas and Acevedo in third. Grousseau disqualified. Through to the final then. Andrew and Casas. Acevedo. Visayas. Check on. Knox, Reitschammer and Colmarty. Yeah, we don't normally see that in the 100 IM. So big news, he would have been the gold medal favourite tomorrow night, the Frenchman. Disqualified for an illegal back-to-breast turn. OK, so we've got the women's 100 metres breaststroke, the medal ceremony, and it's going to feature the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, the medal ceremony for the women's 100 metre breaststroke. The medals will be presented by World Aquatics First Vice President, Mr. Sam Ramsamy. Winner of the bronze medal, representing Germany, Anna Illich. Winner of the silver medal, representing Netherlands, Tess Schuten. World champion and winner of the gold medal, representing United States of America, Lily King. Lily King. Always makes the headlines, does Lily King. Various reasons. She's a wonderful swimmer. The length there. The German receiving her bronze. Really breaking out onto the international scene now. As is Tess Schuten from the Netherlands. She last year in Abu Dhabi. 15th in this event. Improves on that result. She's on the podium. Lily King, we've seen her in this position plenty of times before. She got beaten in Tokyo last year. Looks like a rejuvenated. King. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of United States of America.
Melbourne, give it up for your medalists. This win means a lot to Lily King. She's waited a while for it. She won the silver medal behind Alia Atkinson in Windsor in 2016. And now she finally breaks through for a win at the World Short Course Championships in this event. I mentioned uh, Ali Atkinson there. Of course, she presented medals earlier this evening. She won this event at uh, three championships in a row at Doha in 2014, Windsor 2016, and Hangzhou in uh, China in 2018. So now retired, and uh, well, it's opened the door for other competitors here. Lily King with a gold medal to add to the silver that she won six years ago. Yeah, she mentioned that she wanted to achieve this gold medal. She's won the Olympics, she's won the Long Course World Championships and the Pan Packs, but she hadn't won this event in the short course pool. Lily King, she was really basically undefeated from Rio, was her breakout in 2016, all the way through to Tokyo, red hot favourite in the 100 breaststroke and fell back to third in her favourite distance which was a big shock. And uh, this past summer in Budapest, she won the 200, but was fourth in the 100 breaststroke. So some inconsistent performances from King in the 100 meter distance. And again, you can see the emotion, the celebration, really pumped to get that performance on the board. It was a great showdown with Mel Utite, who was later disqualified, but it made for an emphatic race. And good to see champions like King and Leclerc on top. The next of our finals coming your way right now. The men's 400 metres freestyle. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the swimmers in the final of the men's 400 metre freestyle. Swimming in lane eight, representing United States of America, Jake McGahee. McGahee from the United States in lane eight. His World Championship debut in Melbourne. In lane one, representing Lithuania, Danis Rapsis. He's a 27-year-old from Lithuania, Rapsis, the championship record holder. In lane seven, representing Switzerland, Antonio Jakovic. Jakovic from Switzerland, the bronze medalist in this race in Abu Dhabi last year. In lane two, representing Australia, Thomas Neal. Tommy Neal of Australia, 20 years of age, already a silver medalist here in the 4x1 relay. In lane six, representing Australia, Matt Horton. Matt Horton swimming in the pool he grew up training in, Olympic champion from Rio. In lane three, representing Japan, Matsumoto Katsuhiro. Matsumoto, now 25 years of age, first swam at the World Short Course in Windsor in 2016. In lane five, representing Italy, Matteo Ciampi. Ciampi in five. The Italians having a really strong meet here. Finalists in the 200 free in Abu Dhabi. And in lane four, representing United States of America, Kieran Smith. So Kieran Smith is one of the unheralded American stars. He was the bronze medalist in the 400 metres of the Tokyo Olympic Games. He shouldn't be unheralded, but they've got plenty of big, big names in the American team. Smith looking for a world short course gold medal. The men's 400 freestyle with Smith in four, Ciampi in lane number five, Mac Horton, who won this event at the Rio Olympics in six. Smith there just taking his time. Fastest qualifier from the heats this morning. In the regular on podiums, Mac Horton. You know he can step up when it counts.
400 metres freestyle final for men with Kieran Smith and Matteo Ciampi in four and five. And that long loping stroke of Matt Horton down there in lane number six, Jakovic of Switzerland away nicely in seven. And so too, Matt Tomoko in three. Yes, yeah, Smith there in the middle of the pool. Very tall and long swimmer. Really rolls into these turns quite well for such a big guy. So he doesn't quite lead Matsumoto from Japan. Had a great heats performance this morning. The 200 meter specialist trying to step up into this longer race. See how he can back up from heats to final. But Smith, he went out quick this morning, 146.9. He will swim from the front, it looks like tonight. Djokovic went out quick through the first 50 meters or so, but just falling back there in that black cap. And Matt Corden dropping back early in this one as well. Smith it is. In second place, Matsumoto and Neil. Maybe Neil is just uh, shading Matsumoto now as they go up to the 125. So Smith it is from Neil, Matsumoto, fourth Rapsus, and then Chiampi. Yeah, Smith really rose to the challenge in Tokyo last year to deliver some important medals for the United States men's team in the 400 free and the 200 freestyle. This looks like it's his moment. No one can challenge him just yet. Tommy Neal there in the gold cap of Australia, moving through in second position right now. I'm not sure if Matsumoto is going to be able to hold this pace, but we'll see if Neal can just slowly move up to see if he can challenge Smith. And Smith is on championship record pace. Well, the championship record standing at 3.34.01. 3.34.01 for Rapsus, who's back in fourth place at the moment in lane number one. But, gee, can they catch Kieran Smith? There's a long, long way to go. But uh, he is dominant at the moment. The one who's leading the chase is Neil in lane two. It's incredibly fast from Smith at the halfway mark. 144.9. Unreal. He has opened up this field, but Neil's not letting him get too far away. So the American, so good off those walls. Look at the distance he gets on that streamline without exerting too much energy on those underwater kicks. Neil still hanging in strongly. Smith will see if he will pay for that early speed, but at the moment it doesn't look like he's slowing down. So Smith it is from Neil and Matsumoto. As they go down, still under championship record pace, as they go through the 300 metre mark. Smith it is, Neil in second, Matsumoto third, and then Rapsis. The crowd are rising, they can feel something from Tommy Neal. Standing in lane two there, you can see his teammates cheering in the stands. That lead with three laps to go is just over a second. Good turn from Neil. Smith still swimming strongly. He's using those legs a lot. There's still 50 to go, and Tommy Neal is chasing Smith down. Smith that is, still with a very handy break over Neal. The second of the Australians, Horton, is out of that contention. But the crowd getting behind Neal, he's got a lot of work still to do. In front of Smith, as they turn for the last time at the 375. Smith, Neal. What's he got left here? The crowd getting behind him. Neil's finishing hard. Smith in front. Smith, Neil. Neil can't get there. This is going to be another American win. Kieran Smith takes the gold medal. Tommy Neil takes the silver. And Dennis Rapsis the bronze medal. 334-38 for Smith, winning the 400 free. He seizes the moment, Kieran Smith. A good reward for going out so fast in this wounded free. Smith's a world champion. Off the blocks there. You can see the physical size advantage he's got over the rest of the field. And great in and out of those turns. Opened up a good lead. Tommy Neal was flying home, but even when he got tired, Smith, he was still able to take those long strokes and he just put his head down that last 10 metres when he was herding into the finish to hold off the challenge from Neil. This was the last 50. That's the turn with 50 to go. The crowd really got into that one here in Melbourne with Kieran Smith. Bronze in Tokyo last year. Had a big swim in Budapest to capture gold in the 200 free relay. And now he gets his chance as individual world champion. What a 
Terrific front running performance by Kieran Smith. Smith taking out the 400 free, leading it from go to woe. Tommy Neal finishing hard, but beaten by 67 hundredths of a second. And uh, Rapsus back there in third placing. The men's 400 free. Kieran, what a race that was, right down to the finish there. But you got a world champion top, you're world champion. Yeah, first time I've been a top a podium at an international meet like this by myself. So it's such a big milestone for my career. I mean, it was absolutely amazing to watch. You, you and the Aussie crowd getting behind there, man. But uh, was it amazing out there racing with, with that roar coming in? Yeah, that was really exciting. I knew the Australians were going to be really tough to beat in the final tonight, given that the crowd has been so great this week so far. So I'm grateful for the competition. Well, I loved watching you do that. That was really great. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your new world champion, Kieran Smith. I mentioned unheralded for Kieran Smith. He won't be anymore. He picks up medals and now he's a world champion. As we look down, at the Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre. What an amazing facility here. As I mentioned, it's semi-open air. It's covered, but the fresh air coming in from the sides. It's perfect, really. Unless it gets wintry, cold, as it was for the first few days. But it's a great facility, and uh, what terrific atmosphere we're having here at the World Championships. The 16th FINA World Championships in Melbourne, Australia, and the fans are absolutely loving it. This battle between the Australians and the United States is really hotting up. The USA with four gold medals this evening. Another medal ceremony coming your way right now. Ladies and gentlemen, the medal ceremony for the men's 100 metre breaststroke. The medals will be presented by Melbourne 2022 Organising Committee Executive Director, Mr. Brenton Rickard. Winner of the bronze medal, representing Great Britain, Adam Peaty. Winner of the silver medal, representing Italy, Nicola Montanenghi. World champion and winner of the gold medal, representing United States of America, Nick Fink. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of United States of America.
Melbourne, give it up for your medalists. It's a great win by Nick Fink. He's now 29 years of age, but he's probably intending to go on to the Paris Olympic Games. And who knows what beyond that. Adam Peaty back in action after injury made him miss the World Championships in Budapest. And uh, it's good to see Peaty getting back to his best. He's never a huge fan of short course swimming. His best results in the 50 metre pool. And uh, just perhaps by the next long course World Championships in Fukuoka next July, we're going to see an almighty showdown between that pair, Petey and Fink. Yeah, don't forget Martinegi there. He was on the podium and he won in Budapest. So the Italian, a clutch performer when it comes to these finals as well. And uh, a big 18 months coming up for Petey. It'd be something special if he could win that Olympic crown in the 100 breast three times in a row. We know how dominant he is, or he's been over the last probably eight years or so. But just showing a little bit of vulnerability, not here in Melbourne, but earlier this season, coming back from some injuries as well. Fink takes the opportunity. So, interesting breaststroke races to come. The next of the finals coming up hits the short one, the women's 4x50 metres freestyle. The Netherlands set the world record in 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the women's 4x50 metre freestyle relay final. Swimming in lane 8, Gaston, Moynihan, Godwin, Fairweather, New Zealand. New Zealand swimming in 8, Erica Fairweather. We swim that final leg. Two silver medals here already in Melbourne. Swimming in lane way. one. Univik, Coleman, Hansen, Hansen, Sweden. Well, Univik's the youngster here in this Swedish team. The Hansen sisters, Louise and Sophie, are there with the experience for sure. In lane seven, Igor Hashi, Takahashi, Jino, Soma, Japan. Japan building a strong team. Swimming in lane seven, I Soma. In that last final 50 meters for them. In lane two, Hopkins, Henley, Clark, Wood, Great Britain. Great Britain will lead off with Anna Hopkins. They'll be brought home by Abby Wood, Heinley, and Clark swimming the middle legs. Lane six, Bush, Dewar, Toussaint, Van Roon, Netherlands. Netherlands in six. They are the world record holders from two years ago, but this isn't much uh, different team. To in lane three, Hust, Kurzan, Brown, Douglas, United States of America. The USA is going to be hard to beat. They'll be given a great start by Tory Husk. In lane five, Harris, Wilson, O'Callaghan, McKeon, Australia. The Australian women's freestyle team world records in two relays here in melbourne already can they make it three and in lane four young chen lu wu people's republic of china and china in lane number four yang to lead them off though the quickest through the heats in Great final coming up in the women's 4x50 metres freestyle. China, the fastest qualifiers. The real dangers on either side, the USA and Australia. This is the final of the women's 4x50 metres freestyle relay. Yang. Here's Hopkins, Great Britain in lane two. And the Australians with Meg House. Um, 
Good start there for Husk. We get used to that. It's the Americans in lane number three. Yan for China, Harris, Australia. And going nicely, push at the Netherlands. Yeah, I think this is going to be a two-way battle with the United States and Australia. Harris needs to be good for Australia because Husk can really fly. It's not a dominant opening leg there for Husk. Up there in lane one is Sweden. Also swimming well is Hopkins from Great Britain. Hopkins touches first. Great Britain, a great start there. It was Great Britain who lead it. In their second league swimmer, it's finally the United States, Kirks and Australia, Wilson and Cheng of China. Oh, Claire Curzon in the water, still underwater. Coming up ahead is the Black Couple of uh, the United States. What a turn from the Netherlands as well. The Australians still moving through. They're not too far away, but a little slow at the blocks was O'Callaghan. O'Callaghan, we know she likes to chase on these second 25s. Australian sitting in fourth. Sweden having a huge swim at this point of the race. Look at Sweden in lane number one. The United States in second placing. And we're going down to the last of the changeovers. It's still Sweden. Through goes the USA. USA in first. Kate Douglas in the water. But here goes Emma McKeon. The Australian in the bottom of the yellow lanes. She's on the chase. McKeon and Douglas. What a finish we've got coming up here. McKeon trying to close the gap. It's the United States in front. The crowd getting behind McKeon. I don't think she'll have enough water. It's the United States who'll win it. The USA take it in a championship record time. Australia second. And the Netherlands with the bronze medal. Oh, thrilling racing. The USA. They are having a golden night in the pool. They were desperate for that one. United States women's team upset Australia in front of the home crowd fans. No doubt that was a calculated win for Team USA. They put their flying Tory Husk leading off. This was the last changeover. The United States touched first. Great swim. Great changeover from Sweden up there. Kate Douglas, she's the fastest 50 freestyler in the short course yards pool. So not many people would have known how quick she is in this event. McKeon chasing her down. Just needed a couple more metres with those long arm strokes of Katie Douglas. Just held on towards the finish. Those, some of those splits were so fast. 22.77 for Douglas. 22.73 for McKeon. Quickest of the field. This is the finish, Douglas at the top, striding out, long strokes, McKeon driving towards the finish. And the race result is under review. Yes, it's uh, a lot happening in a short space of time. I think we've got the all clear though. Let's look at this result. Yes, a championship record, the gold medal for the United States, Australia with the silver, the Netherlands with the bronze. The officials happy with all of the changeovers. Well done, the USA. Well, I tell you what, a championship record. It has been a great night for Team USA. What a race, ladies and gentlemen, right? I think family up here, anything you want to say to them? You're just a world champion. Thank you so much for coming, Dad. I know it took six flights, but I love that you're here. We love it. We love that support. I mean, that race, the 4x50, is so fast. I think every team was in first place at some point in that. Okay, what was going through your mind? It's the last, that last 50, it's neck and neck. You're basically diving into a beach. Yeah, I mean, obviously it was a really close race so, the whole time. But yeah, I got really loud before that last 50. And I think, you know, the crowd kind of really helped, you know, get my momentum going into that last 50. Well, you guys did a great job. You're world champions, a championship record. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Team USA. What a night for the United States. That is gold medal number, let's just work it out, is it six? Now we've got one more race to go. The men's 4x53. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the relays in the men's 4x50 meter freestyle relay final. In lane eight, Kovara, Linick, Buka, Zetayaka, Ukraine. Ukraine represented in lane eight. Bob Rock, world record holder in the 50 fly. 
in lane one. Paul Martin, Dominguez, De Celis, Montalva, Moya Yanis, Spain. Spain taking lane number one with a qualified 126.29. Cole Martin will lead them out. In lane seven, Pizarro, Santos, Santos and Pechoto, Brazil. Brazil swimming in seven. Nicolas Santos still got another swim in him. He's 20 years older than his teammate Gabriel Santos. In lane Santos. two, Cooper, Temple, Southam and Chalmers, Australia. The Australians in two, Kyle Chalmers already with a goal tonight will anchor this quartet. In lane six, Matsui, Kawane, Kawamoto, Nakamura, Japan. Japan in six, strong heat swim this morning. Kawamoto will swim third, Nakamura swimming fourth. In lane three, Miresi, De Plano, Cheso, Frigo, Italy. It's a strong team this, the Italians. They'll be given a great start by Moresi. Check on swimming the third leg. In lane five, Curtis, Cossus, Armstrong, Kibler, United States of America. United States men, second passes through the heats. David Curtis will lead them off. In lane four, Simon, Korsanja, Pinnenberg, DeBoer, Netherlands. And the Netherlands with the fastest time through the heats in lane four, establishing themselves as the team to beat 123.7. Of course, changes have been made to various teams since then, but they've got a red hot chance. of the relays this evening, the men's 4 by 50 metres freestyle with the Netherlands and the USA in 4 and 5. Home nation Australia out in lane 2. Netherlands, the United States, Curtis Simmons coming up now. He's probably come up in front lane six to Pan with Matsui off to a great start. Oh, look how tight this racing is. Curtis with the United States racing in international waters for the first time. Matsui had a good turn there. Simmons moving through in lane four. Nothing in it at the first change. Curtis touches first, gets USA an early lead ever so slightly. Shane Cassis in the water now. All lanes two through to six, nothing separating them. It's the Netherlands now taking over from the United States. What a race we've got here as they go down towards the halfway mark. Australia's right in this up there in lane number two. They're third behind the Italians and the Americans. Italy leading at this point, check on in the water. Australia having a good swim and they've got Chalmers on the on the anchor. Check on now, staying underwater. Italy with a quarter body length lead, the Netherlands moving through. So down to the last of the changeovers, the Italians. Frigo goes in in second place, Japan, United States in third. What's the time to ball? The Netherlands in the top of those yellow lanes. He's storming through that first 25. Italy with a point four lead, but here comes the Netherlands. The Netherlands, watch this finish in lane four. Australia. It's the Netherlands. Oh, no, it could be the Australians. The Australians oh. take it. Kyle Chalmers does it again. Chalmers. Are you kidding me? 20.3 on that ankle leg for King Kyle. Two gold medals tonight. And that got the crowd on their feet. What a performance from the Australian men. They go one better than the women this time. Oh, way to bring it home. An amazing, the competitive race that. And the Australians have scored oh, home. He is a super duper racer, Kyle Chalmers. He enjoyed that anchor leg, the Chalmers. So many times we've seen him scrap at the end for a silver or a bronze. Look at him, he's fifth off the blocks. 
in a race that only lasts 20 seconds. He picked them off one by one. How tight was that relay? That was the last turn, I believe. Charman stayed under longer than he normally did. Got under those waves, into the finish. He's breathe, breathing twos. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Head down. And he takes that one ahead of Italy and the Netherlands. Unbelievable anchor leg split there for Chalmers. <laughs> what a swim. It was an, an intriguing race, an exciting race. It could have gone to any of about six teams with 25 metres to swim. And it was Chalmers. Is there a better racer in world swimming? Kyle Chalmers rises to the occasion. Gold to Australia. Silver Italy. The Netherlands take the bronze in the men's 4x53. What a way to finish for Australia. Wow, wow, wow. What a way to finish the night. Right, guys? Yes. I mean, uh, amazing race. It is so fast. Matt, it, you know, you're underwater on that final turn, got you guys back in top three. Kyle, that final leg. But it's a team effort in a relay. What was it like being out there just racing alongside the boys? I mean, it's incredible. It's been a while since I've been on the team, but it was great to be standing beside my friends here. Um, and I can't believe that we won that, to be honest, but that was an awesome race. It really, really was, guys. And Kyle as well, all these people cheering you guys on. There was a big roar as you guys went in for that final leg. Anything you want to say to them? They all came out to see you guys on. Thank you all so much for turning up tonight. Uh, we've got a few more nights left in the pool, so I expect a crowd this big for the next three nights, but very, very grateful we couldn't do it without the support and energy from everyone. It's amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your world champions, Team Australia! An amazing way to finish the swimming program here on night three. Well, what a night of finals. One of the best we've had over the last couple of years. Mike, that finish again, can't get enough of it. And in this evolving narrative, that gold medal just responds to the run that the United States had tonight here on night three. Australia now with eight goals, the United States with nine. And remarkably in that race, the United States finish out of the medals. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, the Australians, Italy and the Netherlands, and you would have thought the United States was right there, favourite for gold. The next of the ceremonies now, it's going to be joy for the USA in the men's 400 free. Ladies and gentlemen, the medal ceremony for the men's 400 metre freestyle. The medals will be presented by three-time Olympic champion and Dolphin alumni, Mr. Grant Hackett. Winner of the bronze medal, representing Lithuania, Danis Rapsis. So Danis Rapsis, the championship record holder, going into that Winner of the final. silver medal, representing Australia, Thomas Neal. Really good swim by Tommy Neal. He was closing hard, takes the silver. World champion and winner of the gold medal, representing United States of America, Kieran Smith. And what a wonderful performance this was by Smith. He was never headed, he took it out hard. He had to hold on in the closing stages, and he did. Last swim there from Smith. Doesn't quite get the championship record. Owned by that man on screen, Janis Rapsis. At the back end of his career now, still on world championship podiums. Bronze medal for Rapsis in this Horner freestyle. He won this event back in 2018. Presentation being made by Grant Hackett, who won this event in Hong Kong in 1999, again in Moscow in 2002. What a star he was over the four and the 1500 in particular. Yeah, awesome to see him presenting that medal to Tommy Neal as well. Silver on the international stage. Dancing back from some.
disappointments recently. And Kieran Smith, as he said in his interview, finds himself on top of the podium in an individual event at the world stage for the very first time. A moment he'll never forget. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of United States of America. Breakthrough world title for Smith, well deserved, and he joins Chad Carvin, who is the only Americans to win this event. Carvin winning it in Athens 22 years ago, breaking those wins of Hackett, Hackett in 99 and 2002. Yeah, Hackett, the former world record holder in the short course, 400 free. Fourth as well, Hackett broke it. 3.34.01, I believe it was. Back in the early 2000s, 20 years ago. Would have, uh, would have still won the gold tonight, in fact. Kieran Smith, such a well-deserved win here. And the 400, he's probably got a bit to go as well. I'm wondering if... Smith will be swimming the 800. I don't believe I saw him on the list. He's got the 200 freeze on day six of competition. He'll be in the 4x200 as well. He uh, doesn't normally swim those longer events. It's the in-between event, isn't it? Uh, you get some of the starters going from the 4 up to the 8 and others from the 4 down to the 2. It looks like he'll be doing the latter. We saw Grant Hack and Cody Simpson a moment ago. Uh, Packet enjoying himself here. Cody Simpson as well with Emma McKeon, his girlfriend. Great performance earlier this evening. Looks like his parents have made it down under all the way to Melbourne. Smith trains at the University of Florida. Do you know who else trains there? The Decky, Dressel. Bobby Fink. It's a pretty good team. There's the finish. We see the yellow cap of Neil. He really did close the gap, but you know, Smith had established a big, big break uh, after about 250 metres, and it was always going to be tough for them to reel him in. Couldn't quite do so. It's been a terrific night, hasn't it? Uh, the Americans, what a night it's been for the Team USA with five gold medals, Australia with three and South Africa with one. That uh, very emotional performance by Chad LeClough. So the Australians off to a great start with uh, wins in both the women's and the men's 100 metres freestyle, McKeon and Chalmers, and then with uh, the exception of Leclo, the USA got on a real roll. Let's have uh, now the medal ceremony for the women's 4x50 metres freestyle relay. Ladies and gentlemen, the medal ceremony for the women's 4x50 metre freestyle relay. The medals will be presented by World Aquatics Bureau member, Ms. Doreen Tibbles. 
World Aquatics Bureau member, Mr. Errol Clark, and Australian swim coach, Mr. Lee Nugent. Winners of the bronze medal, Netherlands. Bush de War, Toussaint Van Roo. Winners of the silver medal, Australia. Harris, Wilson, O'Callaghan, McKeon. World champions and winners of the gold medal, United States of America. Husk, Kurza, Brown, Douglas. Yes, the United States, I mentioned they were on a roll. They won five races out of six there at one point with only Chad Leclerc in the 200 butterflies. Interrupting that run, Tory Husk receiving her Indigenous artwork memento there. She gave them a great start. It's a good all-round performance, great all-round performance, but what a swim by Claire Kurtz and probably set it up. Yeah, she did Erica Brown there as well. And Kate Douglas, winner of the 200 individual medley, showing some speed in the two-lap freestyle events. I'm unsure if she's in the individual 50. It would be nice to see her race at one here. I believe the heats for that are tomorrow. And this is the Australian team, the quartet that broke the world record in the 4 by 100 freestyle relay. Unable to get the job done tonight. Great performances all round. Another medal for Emma McKeon. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of the United States of America. Melbourne, give it up for our medalists. Yes, they always have so much depth for the United States, and uh, they will always be successful in their fair share of relays. The United States in that championship record time, 133.89. Australia in second place. And of course, the Netherlands, who retain, well, they were the. Um, Yes, they retain the world record, of course. Championship rec record going, but the Netherlands remaining the world record holders with that time, 132.5. Yeah, that, it's an unbelievable world mark. 23.1 average splits for the Netherlands team two years ago. They could have won that race by almost three metres. So, shows how strong that team was at that point in history but here history again for the United States women it's their first relay gold of the championships as uh, we saw the men's team not quite yet strike the gold either the mixed relay got gold but now we see the women's team playing gold medal in a relay Harris 
is the one who's given her silver medal away. There's the youngest silver medalist in the history of the FINA World Championships, I reckon. I reckon she's about three and a half to four. There's McKeon now. Don't hurt yourself, Emma. She's got three days of racing to go, climbing into the stands. That must be Grandma. Plenty of fans in the stand here tonight. It's the best weather Melbourne's given us in the last three days. It was great racing and a really strong turnout here in the stands at the Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre. Yes, that weather's been unseasonable, but uh, I'll tell you what, it's on the improve. There were blue skies today and there's plenty of warmth there as we count down the days till Christmas, and that's what you'd expect in this part of the world. In terms of uh, the weather, it's uh, going to be terrific, and the fans are going to pack the stands. And Well, the action's going to be hot, and so too will the temperature. It's going to be really exciting. We're halfway through this competition, and three great days ahead of us. One more ceremony to go, and uh, I think plenty of the locals are staying around for it because uh, it's going to be uh, the Australians who feature. There that we have Australians with a silver medal for the women, the Americans, of course, taking the gold medal. But as far as the men are concerned, wow, it's, it's still hard to get your head around that finish by Kyle Chalmers. And, uh, that is going to be very, very well received in just a few moments from now here at the Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre. Plenty to celebrate for the host nation. So we had nine finals this evening and we've got another eight tomorrow. So that'll be day four, then six on Saturday and on Sunday, well, it's all finals, naturally enough. The last day of competition, 10 races, 10 golds, silver and bronze. Can't wait for that. Yeah, plenty of action still to come. Tomorrow, the swim is going to be busy again. The mixed 4x50 freestyle relay heats are on. No doubt we'll see Maddie Wilson trying to get another medal to give to another lucky little lady. Potentially. Beautiful gesture there. So let's move along to this ceremony we've been waiting for the men's 4x50 freestyle relay. Ladies and gentlemen, the medal ceremony for the men's 4x50 metre freestyle. The gold medals will be presented by World Aquatics Bureau member Dr. Donald Rucare. World Aquatics Bureau member, Mr. Romani Katoa, and Arena Global Sport Marketing Manager, Mr. Thomas Kruger. Winners of the bronze medal, Netherlands. Simmons, Kostanji, Pijnenberg, De Boer. Winners of the silver medal, Italy. Meresti, De Plano, Cecon, Frigo. World champions and winners of the gold medal, Australia. Temple, Salma, Chalmers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So there's Chalmers with that phenomenal anchor leg. They came from the clouds, the Australians. Further than the clouds, Chalmers was fifth. 
There were more teams in front of him than behind him. Temple swam great, 20.7. And Cooper, what a meet he's having. Led off in a 21-2 Australian record tonight in the 50 back semis. The rise of Isaac Cooper continues and the dominance of King Kyle extends to the waters in Melbourne. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of Australia. So that's been a wonderful victory for the Australians. And looking through, obviously, Cooper's having a wonderful world championship, you expected from Chalmers, but it's an especially good result for the youngster, the 17-year-old Flynn South, and a lot is being made of his potential. He was speaking the other day, and he said he, he would love to follow in the footsteps of uh, Chalmers, who started his career as a youngster swimming relays. And then within a year of that, of course, he won the gold medal at uh, the Rio Olympic Games. And Southam finds himself now a gold medalist at world championship level in the relays, and his turn as an individual sprinter will come. That's why these meets are so important, to give exposure and experience to the younger swimmers before they get to a long course world, which is a much bigger deal, and of course, the Olympic Games. But we've had this succession of 100 meter freestylers in the past probably decade and a half Eamon Sullivan into James Magnuson which then propelled Cam McAvoy to the top of the world rankings Chalmers took over and now they're hunting Chalmers and Flynn Southam leads that charge world champion now Southam and Chalmers there leading the crew Kupak, Cooper and Temple yeah! Temple is pumped, Melbourne local. What a great short course racer he is. Now trains in Adelaide under the guidance of Peter Bishop and alongside Chalmers. And the Aussie fans, they have stayed in the stands. They all want a piece of these four men. An electrifying relay. I'm gonna go home and watch that a couple of times before I go to sleep tonight, I reckon. You won't sleep after watching it. And highlights from the third final session of racing here at the Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre. Look at that finish. Emma McKeon kick-started a gold rush for the home nation, taking the women's 100 freestyle. The next race, Australia made it two in a row. Carl Chalmers with a strong last turn, reaching out and claiming victory and his first individual world championship medal. Next up. The women's 200 fly. We saw a new champion crown, Dakota Lotha, Luther, the United States swimming first and second in that event. And Chad Leclerc back on top. The king is back. That's a quote from Leclerc taking the 200 fly for the fourth time 
And a great battle there. The United States, they're on a tear through the middle part of this program. Lily King getting the touch over Mel Utite in the women's 100 breaststroke. And Petey tried and tried, but he couldn't catch this man, Nick Fink, making it a United States double in the 100 meters breaststroke tonight. The 400 freestyle, Kieran Smith got another goal for Team USA. And the first time he stepped on top of the podium, this time in the 400 freestyle. And what an exciting way to finish the night. Head-to-head -head racing in the women's 4x50 freestyle relay. United States just ahead of Australia before Chalmers anchored home to goal for the Australian team in the men's sprint relay. It's been a remarkable night. The United States have taken the bulk of the golds, five golds to make it a total of nine golds and 17 in total. The Australians, though, would be more than happy with their haul. Another three golds to make it eight and a total of 15. Italy and South Africa. South Africa winning through Chad Leclerc this evening. What a night it has been. So the USA with five golds tonight, Australia three and South Africa one. What about tomorrow? So we're halfway through these championships. Day four tomorrow morning, we've got plenty of heats action and uh, it'll include that swim off down there in the men's 50 metres backstroke and the 1500 metres freestyle for women, but all of these heats to get us through to semi-finals and finals. It's been fantastic. I hope you've enjoyed the action tonight. We certainly have three days down, three sensational days down and three fantastic nights to follow. Gee, Melbourne is very, very lucky. We look forward to your company again tomorrow.